Hello, Sarah. Hello, Megan. I don't understand how you can see to drive. Maybe you should put on your glasses. Putting on my glasses would help you to see? Not me, you. You're focused on the windshield instead of the road. Maybe we could stop and, and wait this out. Sweetheart, if I felt we were in the slightest danger, I'd have pulled over long ago. You're not a comfort, Megan. Honey, I'm trying to be. You just go on in your same old ways like before. Your little routines and rituals day after day. You're not the only one. I don't know why you feel it's your loss alone. I just do sometimes. Do you suppose that person has any idea? I'd like to go see him in prison, Bacon. I'd like to say to him, look at me, look. Do you understand what you did? You didn't just kill the people that you shot. What you did goes on forever. You didn't just kill my son. You killed me. You killed my husband. Do you understand? And when I'm sure that he does understand that he feels just terrible, I'm going to open up my purse and take out a gun and shoot him between the eyes. Sweetheart. Lord, I don't think I've ever even seen a gun. Isn't that odd? Ethan's seen one. Ethan's had an experience you and I have no notion of. Sarah, it's bad for you to talk this way. How am I supposed to talk? I just feel we can't afford to have these thoughts. Oh, that's right. Just shut the door. Just pretend it never happened. Go rearrange your tools, why don't you? Line up the wrenches from biggest to smallest instead of smallest to biggest. That's always fun. Megan, I want a divorce. What? What'd you say? I just can't live with you anymore. Honey, listen, it's been a hard year. We've had a hard time. People who lose a child often feel this way. Everybody says it puts a terrible strain on a marriage. I want to find a place of my own right away. You can keep the house. You never did like moving. She didn't leave me, Rose. We decided to separate. That's all. The last thing I need is my sister saying, Oh, poor Macon, how could Sarah do this to you? Why would I say that? Everybody knows the Leary men are difficult to live with. No. Where is she? She's got an apartment downtown. Has she been in touch since she left? She's come by once or twice. Once, actually, for things that she needed. What kind of things? Well, uh, double boiler, things like that. She was checking to see how you're doing. Did you talk at all? No, I just handed her the double boiler. Oh, Macon, you might have asked her in. I was scared she'd say no. Well, anyhow. But I'm getting along. Yes, of course you are. Yes. It was always okay. This is Julian. I know. Well, just when do you uh, figure to bring me a manuscript? I don't know. Can I expect it by the end of the month? No. Soon, do you figure? I don't know. Hey, pal. You okay? 
que tus traigas. I'm fine, just fine. I'll have the manuscript in by the 15th, possibly earlier. Yeah, very possibly earlier. Okay, pal. Goodbye. I'll take those for you, sweetheart. You'll be fine here. No, I need to check them up front, darling. It's a rule. You have a rule about crutches? Well, they might trip the other customers, honey bunch. Hello, Megan. Hello, Sarah. What did you do to your leg? <laughs> well, um, I had a kind of fall. A fall? Sarah, it's been awful living apart, hasn't it? Megan, I asked you here for a reason. We need to spell out the details of our separation. Sarah, I think you ought to come home. It's not possible. Listen, don't say no before you hear me out. Have you ever considered we might have another baby? Why not? We're not too old. I'll make it. I know we can't replace Ethan, but we no. have to... No. I'm sorry, it would never work. All right. Forget that. It was a crazy idea, right? Crazy notion. All I'm saying is I think we ought to start over. I am starting over, Macon. I'm doing everything I can to start over, but that doesn't mean I want to live the same life again. We just didn't have much left, don't you see? I mean, look who you turned to when you broke your leg. Your family. You're closer to them than you ever were to me. That's not true. Or rather, maybe it's true in the sense we're blood relations. <sighs> Playing that ridiculous card game no one else can fathom? Cruising hardware stores like other people cruise boutiques. As other people cruise boutiques. Picking apart people's English. Have to have your precious baked potato. The best house in the world could come on the market, but you can't buy it. Because you just ordered address labels for the old house. 1,500 gummed labels. You have to use them up before you can move. It wasn't me. That was Charles. It could have been you. And his wife divorced him for it. No, Macon, I think that ever since your mother abandoned you in that old house with your grandparents... She you... didn't abandon us. We chose to live with them rather than travel around. Uh, exactly. Them. You chose your grandparents over your mother because they had everything under control in their world. Nothing wild, nothing unpredictable like your mother. And look, Macon, there you all are again. Back in that old house with no one from the outside to ruffle your feathers. Sarah, it's what happened to Ethan that ruined us. But it doesn't have to why some people, a thing like this brings them closer together. Why are we letting it tear us apart? Ever since Ethan died, I've had to admit that people are basically bad. Evil, Macon. They're so evil, they take a 12-year-old boy and shoot him through the skull for no reason. I've given up watching the news on TV. There's so much wickedness. There have been times when I haven't been sure I could... I haven't been sure I could go on living in a world like this anymore. I knew you wouldn't try to argue. You believed all along they were evil. Well, so... so this whole past year, I felt myself withdrawing from people just like you do. <laughs> just to ask you to, sorry, Megan. I felt myself becoming a leery. Well, there are worse disasters than that, I guess. I can't afford it. I live in an apartment you'd hate. All clutter. I'm studying sculpture again. I always did want to be a sculptor, but teaching just seemed more sensible. You see, that's how you would think. Sensible. 
You're so quick to be sensible. You've given up on just about everything. What have I given up on? Everything that might touch you or disrupt you or upset you. I'm sitting here with you, Sarah. You don't see me giving up on you. When Ethan died, you emptied his bureau and his closets as if you could not be rid of him soon enough. You kept offering people his junk in the basements, the, the sleds and the skateboard and the stilts, and you couldn't understand why people wouldn't accept them. I know that you loved him, but I can't help thinking you didn't love him as much as I did. You're not as torn apart by his going. I know you mourned him, but there's something so, what do you call muffled about the way you experience things as if you were trying to slip through life unchanged. Sir, I'm not muffled. I'm, I endure. I'm trying to endure. I'm holding steady. If that's what you really think, you're just fooling yourself. You are encased. You are like something in a capsule. It's not by chance you write those silly books telling people how to, how to travel without a jolt so they can go to the most wonderful exotic places in the world and never be touched by them, never feel like they've left home. That winged armchair isn't just your logo, it's you. No, it's not. It's not. So anyway, what I wanted to tell you was I, uh, I'm having John Albright write you a letter. Who's John Albright? He's an attorney. Uh -huh. Oh. I'm sorry if this hurts you, Macon. I'm sorry. Here you go, Pumpkin. Y tus trailers, visita mi canal. Sir, sir. I suspect they may have given you my crutches.
answer just this once. Pick up the phone. Yes, Larry here. Charles. Macon. Charles, listen, I'm... I'm up on top of, of this building, and a uh, sort of silly thing has happened. Listen, you've got to get me out of here. You out? What, what are you talking about? You've got to get me out. I'm shut in the pantry. Your dog has me cornered. It's like some kind of illness or attack or something. I don't think I can manage the elevator. Macon, you hear that barking? That's Edward, okay? Edward has me treed, I tell you. You have to come home this instant. But I'm in New York. I'm up on top of this building, and I can't get down. She's out. Julian came to take her to dinner. And... Yes, isn't that his name? Yes, yes, and Edward went into one of his fits. So Rose said, quick, shut him in the pantry. So I grabbed the leash, and he turned him. He near took my hand off, so I shut myself in the pantry instead. And Rose must have left by then, and Porter's out. Macon, if you don't get me out of this, I'm going to call for the police to come shoot him. He was Ethan's. Macon, I'm sorry, but you knew that dog would have to be done away with sooner or later. I'm going to get you out of there, so don't do anything hasty. Are you listening, Charles? Sit tight. I'm going to take care of this. Goodbye. The trouble is that uh, Edward's got my brother cornered in the pantry, overreacting. Uh, Charles, I mean, he always overreacts. And and uh, here I am on top of this building in New York, and I'm having a kind of um, disturbance. Edward's in your pantry? No, Edward's outside the pantry barking. My brother says he's going to call the police and tell them to come shoot Edward. Well, what a dumb fool idea. Yes. So, I thought... If you could go over and to get the key from the mailbox and... I'll go right away. Oh, wonderful. So, bye for now, Macon. Uh, wait, wait. But see, I'm on top of this building and then... Um... Something has scared the hell out of me. Oh, Lord, I'd be scared too after I went and saw Towering Inferno. No, no, it's nothing like that, fire or heights. Did you see Towering Inferno? Boy, after that, you couldn't get me past jumping level in any building. I think people who go up in skyscrapers are just plain brave. I mean, if you think about it, you've got to be pretty brave to be standing where you are right now, Megan. Well, not so brave as all that. No, I'm serious. You're making too much out of it, really. It's nothing. You just say that because you don't realize what you went through before you stepped into the elevator. See, underneath you said, okay, I'll trust it. Well, you ought to be walking around that building so amazed and proud of yourself. <laughs> Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get Edward and take him to the Meow Bow. Then when you get back from your trip, we have to talk about his training. I mean, things just can't go on this way, Mason. Oh, you're right. They can't. You're, you're right. I mean, this is ridiculous. You're absolutely right. No, wait. Kitus <clears throat> Trailers. Visita mi canal. Rose, what exactly is it you're doing to this turkey? I told you. Slow heat. Jam Charles of syrup. Syrup. See, I read an article about slow-cooked beef, and I thought if it works with beef, it must work with turkey, too. But at the end, I'm going to raise the temperature. You'd have to raise it mighty high. You'd have to expose it to a nuclear flash. Well, you're both just plain wrong. Who's the cook here, anyhow?
They finally did let Alexander come home. He cried like a kitten would cry. Norman would get this kind of stubborn look on his face whenever I had to do something, go warm a bottle or something. I'd be hanging over the crib watching Alexander fight for air, and Norman would call, Muriel, commercial's just about over. So one day Norman's mother came over and helped him pack up his clothes, and he left me. Now, just act like we expect no trouble. Just go along, go along. Don't even look in Edward's direction. Edward, that was wonderful. Really. All that time Alexander was in the hospital seemed so awful. But now when I look back on it, I almost miss it. I mean, there was something cozy about it. I think about those nurses gossiping in the nurse's station and the rows of little babies sleeping. It was winter. Sometimes I'd stand at a window and look out and feel happy to be warm and safe. I'd look down at the emergency room entrance and watch the ambulances coming in. Ever wonder what a Martian might think if you happen to land near an emergency room? You'd see the ambulance come whizzing in and everybody running out to meet it. Tearing the doors open, grabbing up the stretcher, scurrying along with it. Why, he'd say, what a helpful planet. What kind and helpful creatures. He'd never guess that we're not always that way. What a helpful race of beings, the Martian would say. Don't you think so? Well, sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, this is terrible. This is just terrible. 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 Just let me turn off the main valve and we can leave. Leave? The sofa's ruined, and I don't think you can save the rug, Macon. Ooh, darn. Yeah. These pillows are useless. Don't worry about it. Your insurance cover this? I suppose so. I must say you're remarkably calm, Macon. No one lives here anyhow. Come along, Porter. Well,
bacon. Oh. Dear. <laughs> and who have we here? I'd like you to meet Muriel Pritchett and Alexander, her son. Really? How do you do? This is my, um, mother, Alicia. Bondero. Bondero. Oh, really, Megan? I don't change husbands that often. Pleased to meet you. Tell me, have you known Megan long? Oh, kind of. He's very stuffy. All my children are. They get it from the Leary side. They were raised by their grandparents. Well, practically. Who turned them all into little Learys. I think he's nice. Nice? Oh, yes. Nice. Well, that's all very well and good. Alexander, coming? Well, I guess you'll know what to do with this. I can't believe I'm getting a son-in-law. All I've ever had were daughter-in-laws. Daughters. No. Daughter-in-laws. Daughters-in-law, Mother. Didn't manage to keep them long, either. I never told you this, but a while before I met you, I was dating somebody else. Who was that? He was a customer at the Rapid East Copy Center where I worked. He brought me his divorce papers to copy, and uh, we ended up having this conversation and started going out together. <laughs> his divorce was awful. He said he didn't think he could ever trust a woman again. Didn't even like going to sleep when a woman was in the same room. But bit by bit, I changed all that. He relaxed. We started talking about getting married. Then he met an airline stewardess and eloped with her nine days later. It was like I had, you know, cured him just so he could elope with another woman. You wouldn't do anything like that, would you, Macon? No, oh, me? Would you elope with someone else? Would you see someone else behind my back? Of course not. Would you leave me and go home to your wife? What are you talking about? Would you? Now this here's your paste wax. You never want to polish a car with anything but paste wax. And here we have a diaper. Diapers make real good rags. They don't shed hardly no lint. I generally get a dozen or so at a time from Sears and Roebuck. And chamois skins, well, you know chamois skins. So what you do is you get yourself these here supplies and a case of good beer and a girl. And you head on out to Lock Raven. And you park in the shade. You take off your shirt and you and the girls start to polish them. Ain't no sweeter way that I know of to use up a spring afternoon. Is it better than babysitting? Hell yes. Remember, Tommy, 9.30 in bed for Alexander. Yes, I know. It's bee season, Muriel. So? Well, I know how summer creeps up, and I was wondering if you'd thought about Alexander's shots. Don't you believe I can manage that much for myself? Find one you are, ditch that child, and then call me up on the telephone to see if I'm raising him right. 
criticize. That's what you want to do. Tell me oodles of noodles is not a balanced meal, and then go off and desert him. Have the nerve to call me up and tell me I'm not a good mother. Oh, wait, Muriel. Dominic is dead. What? Not that you would care, he died. Dominic Sadler? It was his night to take my car and... Uh... He went to a party in Cockeysville. And coming home, he crashed into a guardrail. The girl he had with him didn't get so much as a scratch. Dominic? Dommy died instantly. Oh, my God. I have to go now and sit with Mrs. Sadler in the funeral home. Is there something I can do? No. I could stay with Alexander, maybe. Alexander's got people of his own to stay with him. Sounds like you have company. I'll let you get back to your life. Can I come to your room for a while? My TV set only gets snow. We'd better say goodnight. Can I just come in and keep you company? No, Muriel. Don't you understand my position? I've been married to her forever. I can't change now. Why is that? Good night. If I ask them what something is in English, do you think they'll be able to tell me? Oh, you don't need to bother doing that. Just order salad niçoise. Order what? I thought you said you'd read my guide. Salad niçoise. It's the one safe dish I've been all through France eating nothing but day in and day out. Sounds kind of monotonous. No, it's not. Some places put green beans in it, some don't. I think I'll just ask the waiter. Do you suppose they call them French doors in France? What? Oh, I really don't have the slightest idea. I haven't been sleeping so good. I get bad dreams. Last night I dreamed about Dominic. I dreamed he was mad at me. Mad? He wouldn't talk to me. Wouldn't look at me. Turned out he was mad because I wouldn't let him use the car anymore. I said, Dommy, you're dead. You can't use the car. Well, don't worry about it. It was just a travel dream. I'm scared it means he's mad for real, off wherever he's at. He's not. He wouldn't be mad. He's happy as a lark. I really think so. Sure, he's up there in some motor heaven, polishing a car all his own, and... It's always spring, and it's always sunny, and, and there's always some blonde in a halter top to help him with the buffing. You really think that might be true? Yes, I do.
Je pense que madame a fait un très bon choix. You will like it. Thank you. There. Wasn't he nice? That was a rare exception. Darn fringe. I keep thinking something's crawling up my leg. Where are you going tomorrow, Megan? Out of Paris altogether tomorrow, I start on the other cities. <clears throat> Leaving me here alone? This is high-speed travel, Muriel, not fun. I'm waking up at crack of dawn. Take me anyway. I can't. Macon, will you do this for me? Will you just think about it tonight and decide in the morning? What? Whether I can go with you or not. I won't be any bother, I promise. Just think about it tonight. Okay? Yeah. Mademoiselle Pritchett n'est pas dans sa chambre. No, I know that she's not in her room. Um, has she uh, um, check, checked out? Elle n'est pas là? I know that she's not here. Uh, 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 Partir, the hotel? Oui. Thank you. 